Hello, ladies and gentlemen, section 2.3. Again, a couple more definitions. One, you're probably sick and tired of hearing, that's enthalpy, that's delta H. Yes, we are talking about it again, I apologize in advance. And entropy, totally new, we'll get there in about five minutes. So we're just going to compare these two definitions and how they basically affect equilibrium. So let's start with the uh, enthalpy and the one that you're probably very, very good at. Um, enthalpy, remember, is delta H. It's the, it's the change in energy of the system. Um, we've been drawing those on potential energy curves. We're going to be doing the exact same thing in Chapter 2, but we're just going to um, change our wording around a little bit. This actually may help um, a few of you. It says in an exothermic reaction, delta H is negative. We know that, um, which means enthalpy is going to be decreasing. So we're just going to use the word decreasing, and the heat term is on the right. So endothermic is opposite. Delta H is positive, which means you're gaining energy, so enthalpy is going to be increasing. So we're not going to be drawing a bunch of graphs and throwing different things at you for endo and exo with delta H's and pluses and minuses. We're just simply going to be saying its overall enthalpy is decreasing in exothermic and the overall enthalpy is increasing in an endothermic. So there's the reaction. Delta H is negative. That's exo, so we can say that it's decreasing. Um, there's an example. This is actually endothermic. Um, when it's endothermic, the enthalpy is increasing. Okay, so you're going to get very simple questions, just basically saying, hey, what's going on? Is it increasing or decreasing? What we want to focus our energy on are the things that have minimum enthalpy. So is it the reactants or products that have the lowest energy possible? Because that's a main part of this section. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. So here's my example. Delta H is positive. We know it's endothermic. If it's endothermic, the reactants are going to have the minimum enthalpy. If I draw this graph out, ooh, that's not the right graph, sorry. If I draw this graph out, the reactants are here, the products are up here. The reactants have the lowest energy, so the reactants have the minimum enthalpy. Okay. In uh, B, it's also endothermic, so the reactants are going to have the minimum enthalpy. In C, it's exothermic, so if I'm drawing this out, look where the products are compared to the reactants. The products have minimum enthalpy. Okay, And same with D, exo, products. We want to look at what has the minimum energy. Because in the real world, in the chemical world, the systems want to have minimum enthalpy. Okay? They will do whatever it takes to have the lowest energy possible. So they want to achieve a state of minimum enthalpy. Once again, I gave you the world's largest blank for the smallest answer. i got to fix that. Here's another example. It's endothermic. This one says, if only the enthalpy is considered, are the reactants or products favored. So if the minimum enthalpy is favored, and this is endothermic, the reactants have the lowest energy, so the reactants are going to be favored. Okay? We're saying the exact same thing, just in a few different ways. Okay? Species want to have minimum enthalpy, and they'll do whatever it takes to get minimum enthalpy. Question number four, this is exothermic. Think of this graph in your head. Looks like that. Look where those products are. The products are the lowest. So if only enthalpy is considered, the products are going to be favored in this reaction, in this equilibrium. Okay. To say the exact same thing again a different way, here's the reaction. It's exothermic. If this reaction was proceeding to the right, is this a favorable change? Well, if it's proceeding to the right and it's exothermic, enthalpy would be decreasing. And if enthalpy is decreasing, that is a favorable change. It wants to go to the side with the least amount of energy. It wants to, be, um, wants to have the least enthalpy possible. So here's a reaction. This is endo. If this reaction was proceeding to the right, enthalpy would actually be increasing. Because if you draw this out, it's going to look like that. So if it was making the products, this is actually an unfavorable change. So is this favorable? No, it's not favorable. It doesn't really want to make products in this case. It wants to stay reactants. So for 7 and 8, very similar. Exothermic, if it was going right, 
Enthalpy is decreasing, and yes, this is a favorable change. In 8, it's endo. If it was proceeding to the right, it would be increasing in enthalpy, and this is not a favorable change. So what we're trying to drive home here is, it says, if this reaction is exothermic, the products have minimum enthalpy, and the formation of products is favorable. If the reaction is endothermic, the reactants have minimum enthalpy, the formation of products is unfavorable, therefore they want to remain reactants. Okay. Small twist on something that we already know. Entropy completely different. Entropy means disorder. Some textbooks call this randomness. I'm not even sure if randomness is a word, but I like it. Randomness. Randomness means most disorder. So it wants to have no structure. Okay? Solids are very structured. Liquids are kind of structured. Aqueous is the whatever. And gas is the least structure. So the most random thing is a gas, and the least random thing is a solid. Which means species and reactants and products don't really want to be solids. They don't want to be all bunched up together nice and tight. They want to be free-flowing, running around as far away from each other as possible, like gases. And in a system, systems want to have the maximum entropy possible. It wants to have an entropy increasing. Okay? It wants to have the greater entropy. So you're looking for examples like this. Solid and an aqueous to an aqueous gas and a liquid. That's an increasing in enthalpy example. If you've got 9 moles of gas here going to 10 moles of gas, well, 10 moles of gas is more random than 9 moles of gas. So this is an example of increasing enthalpy. All you're looking at are the subscripts. That's it. No tricks here. A, solid to aqueous. The products are going to have the greatest entropy. Two gases to four gases. The products have greatest entropy. From a gas to an aqueous, in this example, the reactants have greatest entropy. And here we've got two gases to one gas. Again, the reactants have the greatest entropy. And a solid aqueous to an aqueous liquid gas, products. And don't laugh at the size of those blanks for the small words we're putting in there. Throw me some, help me out here. So, we're looking for the side that has the greatest entropy. It wants to be the most random. So what are the two things that we have just talked about in this lesson? We said in regards to um, enthalpy, we want to have minimum enthalpy. And in regards to entropy, we want maximum entropy. So those are the two situations. Every reaction wants to be the most random with the least amount of energy. So there will be three scenarios that will pop up. Okay, It says, when two tendencies blank, that means one favors reactants and one favors products, you're going to reach a state of, um, we're going to call that one equilibrium. When two tendencies, we're going to say, oppose each other, That took a long time to write down. Sorry. When two tendencies oppose each other, you're going to reach a state of equilibrium. It means that one tendency is fighting to be reactants, and the other tendency is fighting to be products. They're going to play tug-of-war, and no one's going to win. They're going to be in equilibrium. In the second example, it says here, if one tendency... Um, if the tendency toward the minimum heat, which is favored, and maximum entropy is favored, so we're going to say both the tendency toward minimum heat, maximum randomness, favors products, this reaction will go to completion. Okay, that sounds complicated, but it's not. If the products are both the most random 
and the least energy, that is very, very favorable. So this reaction will react 100% and go to completion. It says all reactants will be converted into products. There will be no reactants left. Okay? This is the ideal situation for a reaction. You want to make as many products as possible. You want the products to be the least energy and the most random. So the last scenario is the opposite of this one. Processes in which um, both the tendency toward minimum heat and maximum entropy favor the reactants. Um, this reaction will not react at all. And why would it? If the reactants have the minimum energy, that's favored, and if the reactants have the most randomness, that's favored, well then they're not even going to react whatsoever. It says here none of the reactants will be converted into products. And just to put this weird one into to more of a context, here's my example. This example is basically like a thousand pieces of glass spontaneously sticking together forming a bottle and jumping high onto the shelf. Okay, That bottle does not want to be a solid high on the shelf. It wants to be smashed to pieces on the floor. Okay, It wants to have the least energy possible and be most random. Okay, So let's just try a couple here real quick. This example is exothermic which means the reactants have the minimum heat and if I look at the gases, I've got two on this side, one on this side. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is products. Products of minimum heat. I need to slow down. Exothermic. The products of minimum heat, the reactants have maximum entropy, which means these tendencies are fighting each other. One favors products, one favors reactants. So if they're put together, you're going to reach a state of equilibrium. In this next example, it's exothermic, so the products have minimum enthalpy. There's one gas there, two gases there. The products have maximum entropy, which means this is going to go to completion. Both tendencies are pushing this reaction to completion, and that's where it's going to go. In my third example, it's endo, so the Reactants have minimum enthalpy. In regards to the randomness, a gas is way more random than a solid. So the reactants are more random, which means this will not occur at all. Okay, This is where we're going to stop. We're going to do this last example together. And then there's a self-test to follow, which is what we're going to do uh, in class. Um, see everybody tomorrow.